Hey all brothers and sisters, my name is Captain Meatshield and welcome back to Space Haven. And I've been playing a lot of this in my spare time. Just to kind of get myself used to the way that the game operates, it's become a lot more intuitive than I thought it would be. Uh, a lot of the things that I was struggling with now make a lot more sense. And yeah, it's it's been really good fun so far. So the, the main things that I'd been struggling with were... Um, like this sort of stuff, like this screen and like the the kind of transfer of resources from from like this this little derelict that we've got over here. Uh, I think we finished salvaging everything. Yeah, all well, this stuff's been dismantled, but this is all of the stuff that we a dismantled and the the rest of the stuff that we can salvage. So what we need to do is we need to click on this stuff and then direct it over to our starship. So we just want to send it all over. This is meat from humans. Ugh. Not, not nice, not pleasant. But we want to transfer all of this stuff over. And we also want to select all of these asteroids because we can get materials from these that we can then refine down into stuff that we can use. So we want to issue orders for all this stuff. And the various different craft, like um, the little shuttles that we've got. Um, these ones, these little pods, will go off to deal with the asteroids, and then people will go off in the in the main shuttle to go and collect all of the salvage. So I'm going to speed things up, because people are sleeping. Oh, they're up and about. Fantastic. Wait for them to get their, get their morning duties out of the way, and then hopefully they'll go off and start gathering things. Yep, there we go. They're all off. Okay, they're going after the noble metals first. Sounds good. We need those for making uh, the advanced blocks and for making hull blocks, which we can use to expand our starship. Um, we also need to prepare for interstellar travel. It was talking about um, hypersleep pods, I think, at the end of the, la end of the last episode, which... Hypersleep chambers, yeah, there we go. Uh, we will need to make those for... Uh, jumping between star systems, but we are currently going to be jumping within a star system. We won't need to worry about hypersleep chambers until we get to this uh, this spot here, which is when we're going to be jumping to a new star system over that way. So for now, we don't need to worry about it. We can just let our people uh, kind of go about their business while we are traveling between the stars. We're traveling between the planets, really, not between the stars. Um, but yeah, critical resources are low, just advanced blocks at the moment. But I think we'll be able to manage. How are things going over here? People struggling for oxygen, apparently. Uh, it's fine. They're headed back to the uh, to our to the Melita, our, our main starship. And we're still, we're gathering up the last of the resources from this asteroid. But I, this has been such a nice game to try, kind of chill out with. The, the music is just so kind of serene and peaceful. Yeah, unload all of that stuff up there. That airlock storage is getting a little bit full. Oh, there we go, it just, it just got filled. <laughs> I want to see how we've got quite a bit of space to expand our spaceship as well, which is really good. I'm looking forward to expanding this and turning it into something a little more substantial. But we are going to be using up a lot of our resources to do that. Fortunately, like the, building a hull piece, building the hull out is not going to require. Yeah, you don't need quite so much. I think one of these blocks can make ten tiles of of new starship. Uh, so we've got plenty of room for uh, expanding upon things. But I don't think we need to do that just yet. We will need to expand... I do want to expand so that I can start building uh, these resource refineries. Because these are going to be very important for taking these base materials and turning them into other things that we can use. 
Uh, I think the chemical refinery is probably going to be the first one I want, actually, because we're going to need to make sure that we can continually have a water supply. And we also need to build, like, start working on some hydroponics so we can be growing food. Hmm, yes, that's something that we're going to need to think about. So where might I want to put that? Definitely going to need a bit of hull expansion in order to do that. I might build a little bit of an extension out over here, so... It's going to be fairly sizable out on the far side of things. But I want a decent amount of room for a few grow beds. Uh, so that's going to cost us... Uh, that's going to cost about... Mm, can I get... Can I get ten? Why is it giving me 9.9 .9 to expand all this? That's weird. But alright, we we're going to expand all of that, and then they'll go out into the pods. The mining pods are used for uh, building extensions onto the hull as well. But my hope is we're going to be able to turn the Melita into a, a self-sustaining little starship. It's going to be good fun to try and help these people survive. Okay, here we go. Hull expansion begins. It does take away all of the external wall that was here, like the whole plating. But we can replace that with just standard walls, we can put doors in. I'm really glad that I kind of sat down to play a lot more of this in my spare time because it's really given me a, a much better understanding of how the game operates and how it plays. Right, I've, I've got a better understanding of how um, you know, the, the power nodes and all that sort of stuff work and how to set up the power connections. It, t it took a little bit of a little bit of trial and error, a little bit of effort. But it's been a fun learning experience, I will say that. Right. I want to put a door in. Over here, and then I want to extend walls along the rest of this. I want to just seal off this out, this whole area. I think, so... If somebody can go about doing that. Have I only got the one construction guy? Who's currently out in the pod building the hole? Uh, that's, that's probably about right, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and it's food time. Yeah, we really need to get these grow beds up and running so that we can start producing food. Uh, my, my hope is that I put enough space in for getting these. Because these have got five grow beds on them. And I want to put in... Oh, I think I'm one tile short of being able to put four, because I want two for artificial meat, and then I want one for fruit and one for vegetables. So I might need to extend the hull out this way just a touch. I think the only issue I've found with this game so far has been the amount that these people sleep. <laughs> they do sleep an awful lot more than, than like, for example, like the duplicates in, in Oxygen Not Included. Uh, there's a much more kind of balanced ratio for conscious versus unconscious time. Which is fine, I get it, it's, it's, it's nice and balanced. Um, it's, it's meant to give, a, I think, a more realistic sort of uh, feel to the game. And to, you know, everybody's kind of work patterns. But it does kind of leave you sitting around for quite a lot, quite a long time. Even even with things on maximum speed, which is what we've currently got it on. But... It's fine. It's fine. We, we can work things. Yeah. It's, not the, it's not the greatest uh, gripe in the world. Uh, no, that's the map. I wanted to have another look at this. We have transferred everything over from the, the, the derelict. I don't even know if I want to try and attempt to pronounce that name. Yeah, I think Brendan's our only builder. He's he's the one who's doing all the work. But with him putting in walls along this way, we can start putting in some power nodes. Only I I've been taking to using the wall nodes a lot more than the others. Uh, do I want to put these on the 
outside walls. I think I might actually, because we've got we've got this one, we've got that one over there, and we've got the actual power core itself that are um, covering like this side of the room. So I think once the external wall gets finished, the external hull, we'll put some wall nodes in just to obviously save some space. Then we're going to put lights around the place, we can dump in a load of grow beds, and it should all look f rather fantastic once it's all done. In fact, I think we're getting close to being able to fit a grow bed in. We are, but... <laughs> Each one's ever so slightly awkwardly set up. Right, Let's dump our first one in there. I'm going to stick a power node in there. Get one in about here, and then probably another one down that side. That should cover the entire room. And I want another grow bed there. Another grow bed there. And I want one more right down here at the end. Then we need to fill the room with lights and let people get to work. Although I think it's now end of the working day, isn't it? Yep. Oh, that's typical. Right, well, at the very least, we can connect this to a power node. Um, yeah, we'll, le we'll leave it at that. Uh, where do I want to put lights as well? Those are under furniture. I'm going to use the, the ones that go on the walls. We'll stick one around there. We'll stick, one, we'll stick them on opposite sides of the room to each other. I just want to be sure that this room is going to have enough light, because I think that the grow beds work less efficiently if they're in darkness. So we want to keep this room fairly well illuminated so that the plants are actually going to grow. Uh, which makes sense, you yeah. know. I think I also need to consider, like, the amount of... Uh, mass capacity, is that... This thing here, mass capacity, I think... I'm not entirely sure if that's referring to, like, the, the, the total mass of the actual starship. Like, how much this one engine is going to be able to pull, or push. Whether I'm going to need to install additional hyperdrives as the, as the size and the, you know, the scale of this starship uh, grows. Right, got some good work there, Brendan. Thank you. Get some light in the place. Wonderful. Would you care to go outside and finish up the uh, the rest of the hole? Yep, thanks. Great. <laughs> and we can dump our last grow bed in. Ah, we do have a slight problem. We're out of basic blocks. Which means we can't actually build anything else. So I suppose we'll make a start on just growing some plants. We'll set all these to be uh, fruits. We'll set the next one along to be vegetables on all beds, and then this one can be our first artificial meat bay. And I think we're going to have to move system now. Uh, no workers are assigned for the farming task. Okay. Why do I not have any farmers? Botany, is that... Huh. Why would it start me off with a group that can't do any... Right. Wow, nobody on my crew has got any farming capabilities whatsoever. So we can't grow our own food. This could be a problem. Uh, Alright, I tell you what, we're going to prepare to jump. We're going to move on to the next system. We're going to see what sort of luck we can have. Liz, why did you leave the starship? We're, we're trying to jump to hyperspace, you silly person. What? How did you get through the wall? Like that That's a solid wall there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I don't know what's wrong with her. <laughs> okay. But all right, let's jump to the next next planet along in the system, where there is nothing for us here. There are no resources whatsoever, but we do have various other factions that are moving around. Obviously, the the red skulls means pirates, so it's not not good news. 
Um, but we do have various other factions. Most of these are neutral. We haven't got any allies yet, but I've not actually found out how to like communicate with with others. I can board enemy. I can board other ships, but all I can do is shoot people, and they don't seem to die. <laughs> oh right, there we go. Yes, mass seven four three out of a thousand. So once the mass goes over a thousand, I will need another hyperdrive. I see. Um. Okay, where to go from here? I think I might take myself up. Uh, do I want to go over this way? There's base metals in it. I'm going to go for this one. There's Hyperium here, which we can use for making... I think it's the FTL fuel. The hyper hyper fuel, or whatever it's called. So we're going to move along this way. And we're going to drop out of hyperspace into this system. Right. Oh, and everybody's decided to go to sleep. Um, am I missing a crew member? Where did... Liz, the woman who was operating my hyperdrive, has disappeared. Did she fall out while we were in hyperspace? Somehow. Where did she go? I don't know where she is. She's just not here. We're in an even worse position now. Hi, hello, how are you? I don't know who you are. What, what is that? That's the... that's a... Different faction starship, that one. That is... What faction are you? The Android Collective. I'll go and say hello in a number of ones and zeros. Um, okay. I don't quite know what to do. Because I don't have a means of being able to produce food. Because I haven't got anybody who can farm. And I just lost my hyperspace engineer. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> where she's gone. So you know what we might do? We might start a new game. But on this one, I think we'll start on the second scenario, where we get to build our own spaceship from scratch. Now this may be a little bit more slow on the kind of uh, uptake, you know, yeah, um, of actually getting things kick-started. We might be spending a few episodes just building the starship. Um, because there's going to be a lot of uh, mining and refining of materials just on the space station that we start on. Um, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we get on. I need a name for this game. This is going to be called the Hyperspace Dropout. <laughs> right, here we go. We are here on the HSS Xerxes. This is our uh, little starting space station. I like how she's just continuing to sing, but, um... It's a really nice piece. I do love this menu music. It's really nice. So, we start off with all of our resources here. Everything that is in this bar up the top is accessible to us. We can't go about dismantling any of the actual hardware. We can't dismantle the space station. But we can use it to... You know, we've got various refineries over here we can use for making uh, some metals. We can turn ice into water. We can turn uh, other materials into electronics. We've got a couple of pods and we've got a shuttle to help us out with getting ourselves started. Uh, first thing I want to do is I want to transfer these base metals and the ice and the raw chemicals and the noble metals. We're just going to mine all of that stuff. We're going to send it over to the Xerxes so that we can start processing it. Uh, oh no, we get four pods, don't we? Yeah, so everybody can get busy. Uh, but we need to start building our new spaceship. Uh, the HSS... HSS Tice. Okay, so build hull. We have a complete slate here. Um, I want to build just a little... 
thing maybe right here in the middle. I'm gonna build I'm gonna build it like five six seven eight across and then we're gonna bring it out a little ways like this. And that should do. Because that will give me three spaces across there to build an airlock and then three spaces next to it to build a storage unit, which is going to be our first series of uh, objectives and tasks. So we need to make sure that we get those done. Uh, obviously, we're, we're going to be busy with mining up all of this stuff as well. Turning the ice into water is going to be a very important thing, because we need water for operating life support as well as producing food. And we want to make sure that we, we get a food supply sorted out fairly early on. We've got you know, a good supply to start us off with. And I think if we set up a kitchen, this turns... Like, this accepts the various different types of foods and turns them into, um... Like, m much more substantial meals, I think. So we, we'll use, like, point two of each of them to turn into one meal or something along those lines. So I think we get a little bit of, uh... A little bit of a gain out of doing things that way. Okay, construction is finally beginning. They, they got busy with a lot of uh, mining over that way, so... Yeah, they, they were distracted for a time. <laughs> but we need to start focusing on just kind of like ship construction. And once we get this hull in place, we need an X1 airlock, which is this thing. Uh, that will allow various different vehicles to, to dock uh, in order to deposit um, resources and for uh, you know the, the shuttle to deliver uh, actual crew members. Why, why, why is one of these beds empty? Where, where is... Uh, oh, there we are. You're coming back from gathering all the noble metals. Uh, yeah, I know your work keeps you busy, doesn't it? Uh, what's your name? Riley. Okay. So we've got Riley, Barry, Mariella, Scylla, and Anson. Hmm. That seems like a good crew of people. I hope I don't get you killed. No guarantees. Ah, oh, brilliant. We've got at least two people that are capable of construction. That is going to make things go a lot quicker. I found that with, like these sorts of starts to the game, you know, where you've got the, uh, you know, you have to start building everything from scratch. Uh, you tend to have a little bit of a better uh, ratio of who can do what. You also start with five people, so that's, that's a little bit of a bonus straight away. Uh, but yes, now we've got space to put down our airlock. We can't actually put anything down unless the, uh, the hole has been built, so uh, we want to put this right there and then we need to wait for that to be built in order to work on anything else but the next thing we are going to need is a large or a large or small storage it doesn't really matter which but I always like to go for a large just for the sake of it and size matters apparently all right get to work oh you're not builders no how very helpful. <laughs> I also want to put the walls up a little bit. I quite like having the walls in the background. I, it, when I was playing this, I finally reminded myself of what sort of games this reminded me of from like the 90s and stuff. And it's games like Theme Hospital, and uh, it's, it's very much got the style of those. Ooh, fantastic, our airlock's finished. Um, yeah, now we can designate who is going to be doing what. Um, so nobody is allowed to rest over on the uh, the ties because we haven't got beds, so they're not going over there. This is this is the home station. Um, but I'm just going to leave things as they are for now, and we're going to get uh, a storage commissioned over there. But yeah, like old old like kind of construction games and, and management simulation games like. Uh, like Theme Hospital and Theme Park, like the old Bulldog games way back in the day. God, I remember you used to play Theme Hospital all the bloody time. 
and you know, kind of things like Roller Coaster Tycoon and SimCity and all that sort of stuff. And it's the, the style is very reminiscent of that, and like kind of, I suppose in a way, like kind of the old XCOM games as well. Because I remember playing some of those. And they were all like kind of isometric, you know, pixel style uh, experiences. Uh, I also n will be needing a tools facility, so I'm going to stick one. Um, ooh, where do I want to put this? I can't put that there yet. I think I can put it there once the uh, storage has been built. But I might put it here. We'll have this just be like a little airlock chamber. We can bring a wall over this way. In fact, I will do that straight away. Where do I, where do I want to put the door? Put a door there. And then we'll bring walls in along that side, like that. And I like I like how the walls just kind of like, they kind of randomise as you build them along as well. It does give the ship an interesting look. It does get a bit awkward when the, like these computer panel ones end up behind a machinery that nobody's ever going to be able to reach. But... You know, it's, it's pretty cool. Oh, there we go. That's a massive construction. Very nice. Right, now we need to build a ship core. So, we need to extend the hull out a little bit for that. Uh, I think this sort of area is going to end up being kind of a main engineering slash shuttle bay sort of job. Uh, we'll extend that out like so. Uh, I'll bring that down so we've got things like that. Uh, while all that's happening as well, I want all of this ice turned into water. We've got 12 blocks of ice. We can make two units of water from 0 0.2 blocks. So, uh, one block of ice will make 10 units of water. Which is pretty good. 11, 12, there we go. If I queue up 12 times 5, that should burn through the entire stock of ice. Uh, which would be very handy. And I also want to turn all of the... Uh, it's the, the raw chemicals that we've got less of. I want to turn all of that into electronics at some point. But just to start with, I want to get the water dealt with. Because we've got a lot of stuff there that we need to transform. Uh, and then we're going to have a lot of metals that we're going to want to do stuff with as well, so we need to make sure we get as much of this stuff done as possible, as quickly as possible, really. Now, what kind of core do I want to build? I don't think these really make much of a difference. Like, they've got very little in the way of difference for uh, the resources they need. Um, I think they probably got different outputs, but I think we only need a small one for the time being. So we're just going to get one of these and we're going to slap you... We'll stick you there, I guess. And then we're going to want a power node up in this corner, I think. We'll stick one on each side of this room just so that we've got... Uh, a, I want to have a good power network around this starship. Uh, I also want to put in uh, some lights. A lot of these things can be installed from the exterior if they're on the walls, so... Shouldn't be a problem to put them like that. And then we're also going to need some life support soon as well, but... We'll worry about that once the other, thing, other things get built, because everybody's going off to bed anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, we're distributing everything out to where it needs to be built. Making a start on some of this stuff, which is good. I've noticed what the, the whole accident sort of prompt means as well. Um, it's there to kind of show that, you know, well, if, if an accident occurs, it kind of resets their uh, construction uh, thing, or whatever task they're doing, whether they're dismantling, whether they're farming, or... Um, anything along those lines, it kind of resets whatever task they're doing. I don't think it really has any other kind of negative effect other than that, but, you know, it is what it is. Alright, let's link you 
Wait, what? You did not finish this, for crying out loud. What happened? Did you have an accident? No, you just didn't... Decided not to finish building it. Right. That's got everything connected up there. Uh, we've got everything built, which is good. Now we need to sort out life support. So we need... Uh, a life support... Generator. A hazardous gas CO2 scrubber. And we're going to need a thermal regulator. So I'm going to put one inside the airlock chamber. Those should all be covered by uh, the power network. I think yes, just. But we'll be putting more um, power links around as the ship continues to expand. So it should work out fine. We do need somebody to come over and plug up the, some shove an energy stick into the uh, into the power generator, into the core. There we go. We finally got some light. We have now got some warmth, which is just great. Yeah, and these two are oh, the the. Life support machine is going to be waiting for a supply of water. But otherwise, we have got things looking rather good. We're just lacking oxygen in here at the moment. Uh, somebody can't sleep. Why can you not sleep? Why are you... Why didn't, why didn't you go to sleep, Anson? Everybody else has gone to bed. What are you doing? Okay, he's decided he wants to go to sleep on the floor. This is one thing I've noticed. Sometimes these guys will just kind of continuously work. They'll just work themselves until they fall unconscious. Sometimes they won't be able to get out of their uh, environmental suits for whatever reason. And some t I've had it happen when I've been exploring derelicts and trying to salvage from them. Uh, where the these guys will, like, one of them will get left behind and then his oxygen will run low and he'll fall asleep and just die in the vacuum of space. And it's like, that, that wasn't great. Maybe you should have got on the shuttle the last time it came back. But sometimes the shuttle will just it will bugger off without them, so you've got to uh, get them with this little draft thing so that you can control them manually. So they can be a, they can be a little bit awkward. You've got to look out for these people, otherwise they're, they're left to their own devices, they probably will die. But I think with that start to getting a new ship up and running, I might leave this episode off here. Um, I'm kind of gutted that we weren't able to keep the other crew active, uh, keep the other game running, because, yeah, it was a little bit uh, awkward trying to, um, let me just slow this down, it was a little bit awkward trying to deal with the fact that we couldn't produce food, and then somebody just vanished. I'm hoping we won't have any of that sort of thing happen with this playthrough. Uh, we'll see how things go, but we are going to be spending a few episodes just building our first space, or building our spaceship, and getting it prepped for traveling the stars. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this ship is going to develop and how we're going to, you know, kind of expand things and what we're going to come up against when we eventually take our first hyperspace jumps out towards other worlds. But for now, I'm going to wrap this episode up here and just say thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out the playlist on the channel for more Let's Plays or Metal Covers and give this video a like or a comment just to leave your thoughts. And if you wish to join the ever-growing ranks of the Order of the Shield, subscribe on YouTube, chuck me a follow over on Twitch, or maybe even consider checking out my Patreon and becoming an officer within the ranks. But thank you again for watching this video, and I will catch you all very, very soon. This is Captain Meat Shield, signing off. I suppose we should open fire, then. Oh! <laughs>